as Kirti said that I'm Simran Arora working with Shorelight Groups and uh, Cleveland State University is one of our partners. Mr. Andrew Yang is from the university and he is product, senior product sales manager working with Cleveland State University, knows in and out of it. And uh, definitely we'll be talking about all the positives uh, to come to CSU, uh, including the entry requirement, scholarship opportunities, COVID situation and life. Stay tuned and please question whatever question you have, ask us. Feel free to ask us, put it in the chat box. We will immediately answer you on that. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you so much again, uh, Andrew, for making this today. Uh, and thank you, uh, Study Metro team, too. Thanks so much, Simran. Um, so once again, thank you all so much for gathering today on this call. Uh, this is a little bit of an agenda, and I know I only have um, uh, about 15 minutes or so, but quickly just doing an introduction about my university. We'll talk about entry requirements. Uh, I know that's always a hot topic. Uh, program costs, tuition, scholarships, and then we'll kind of open it up for Q&A. So uh, for any of you who have not uh, yet heard about Cleveland State University, uh, we're located in the state of Ohio. So it's about 50 states in the, in the US, and I always say that Ohio is one of the best states uh, in the US. Uh, one thing great about Cleveland, um, as we talk a little bit more about the university, is that we are a tier one um, engineering university as well as a top tier uh, public research university. So whether you're interested in research or not, um, I have some students who are looking for thesis tracks or even for non-thesis tracks. It's always great to go to university that is really embedded within the research institutions in the United States as well as globally because it really does um, open up the various um, internship opportunities or even access points for um, OPT placements uh, later on. So to, to give a little bit of a glimpse about my university, uh, we have over 16,000 plus students. And within that population of students, we have over uh, 1,400 plus that are international students just like yourselves. Uh, this past spring semester in January, we welcomed um, over 245 students from India, and they are all thriving, having a fantastic time and really embedded within the university uh, itself. So within Cleveland, we also have eight Fortune 500 companies, and the state of Ohio has uh, 27 Fortune 500 companies, as well as many more Fortune 1000 companies. So one thing, if you look on the slide to um, really kind of stand out, as well as to be informed, is what you see in the top right portion of the screen. So 3,000 plus internships. So internships is something that's really embedded into what the main beliefs of CSU is, is not just to provide um, an amazing academic um, education for students, it's also for them to utilize that, uh, that education for them to have um, great placements, whether it's within uh, internships on campus or off campus, as well as OPT as well. So you can see here, every year we have over 3,000 plus students uh, currently pursuing their internships every given year. So these are a list of some of the partnerships that we have, as well as collaboration and placements. Uh, a lot of these companies should look uh, really quite familiar to you. So within one of the, uh, I would say the main, um, I would say uh, collaborations that we also have is within the CSU Greater Cleveland Partnership. So this organization is comprised of all the businesses in Cleveland. So anytime there is any kind of positions, uh, they always reach out to CSU first as well as target students from Cleveland State University. Um, they're familiar with the prestige, the education, as well as the hands-on experience that students have access to. And that is something that they all are looking really eager to, once again, aggressively uh, recruit students from these set fields. Uh, besides having, and I'll talk about tuition costs later on, but uh, Cleveland is also ranked number 16 when it comes um, to most affordable living in the United States. So when I talk with students just like yourselves, um, one of the things to consider is always tuition costs. Um, besides tuition costs, it's also cost of living. So it is, I would say, your housing expenses, your dining expenses, your utility bills, all of those, um, it gets you know, collected and then it's what we consider um, cost of living. So one of the things to always think about as a student is not just, well, what, is, what will I pay for my entire tuition, but also how much does it cost um, to even live in that city? And one thing great, as I mentioned with Cleveland, is that we're also really cost affordable. So um, these are a list of uh, some of our STEM designated degree offerings. Uh, so STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. Uh, I understand that this webinar currently is for these set majors. 
And one thing great about um, individuals who uh, will, once again, pursue these majors and then graduate with these majors, they're able to receive what's called a STEM OPT extension. So essentially, after you graduate, you're able to work in the country for up to three years uh, prior to, um, let's say, applying for a H-1B or applying for a PhD for your further studies. So within the College of Business, we have our MIS program, Master of, of Information Systems. Within the College of Engineering, we have nine other majors from computer science all the way down to chemical engineering. And I'll talk about the entry requirements for those as well. Okay. So to give you a little bit of a glimpse about the College of Business, uh, we are also AACSB accredited. This is something I would say a benchmark that I would recommend students, uh, if you're interested in anything in the business field, um, to always look for. So this is an international accreditation uh, body that accredits universities globally uh, within the top tier for business schools. So in order to have that accreditation, uh, there needs to be a high achievement of excellence of academics, as well as opportunities for students um, while they're active students, as well as when they graduate. Okay. So we're one of the, um, I would say, 5% of business schools in the world that have that accreditation. Uh, you have other universities such as Harvard, Stanford, Yale, uh, to name a few, uh, Mercer, et cetera. So within the College of Business, uh, one thing great for opportunities for our students is that they will receive on-site recruitment as well as networking events that are geared towards helping them with their placements, so whether they're internship-based um, or whether they're OPT. Um, so a lot of my students who are currently uh, starting their classes in the summer, uh, obviously being um, well, I guess learning from India currently before they're coming on campus, uh, these students will have access to what's called our virtual recruitment um, as well as virtual career services. So should a student um, be taking online classes in the, in the fall semester, um, that student will also have access to the virtual uh, recruitment uh, uh, platforms. So students will also work closely with the College of Business faculty and staff as well as access to the internships, the co-op opportunities, our various career fairs that we have twice, uh, twice a year. We have bus uh, business specific career fairs. We also have engineering specific career fairs as well as the other set majors. So for entry requirements into the business program, uh, once again, if you're interested in MIS, we have two different tracks, thesis or not thesis. Uh, a student does not have to declare what track they're interested in. That's not an issue at all. Uh, it's generally, I would say most students will determine whether they want to thesis or not thesis, some after the first semester, some after the, their first year, so after two semesters, once again, depending on that set student. So um, you can see here, I broke it down by local entry requirements. Uh, in the US, we use a GPA scale. We know that in India, it's generally a percentage or, a C, uh, or CGPA. So we broke it down by that, as well as the English requirements. So I'll kind of talk about those. So if you're currently having a bachelor's degree, um, let's say uh, 55 out of 100, or 6.5 out of 10, you are fine. That is our minimum uh, academic requirement in order to gain admission to the MIS program. If you're falling a little bit shy, let's say between 50 to 55, or between six to 6.5, uh, however, you graduated from what we consider a NUSER one or NUSER two ranked university or a tier one or tier two university. Uh, some of the universities are uh, universities like Pune, uh, University of Mumbai, GNTU, to name a few. Uh, and your and your counselors as well as our academic team will will also know uh, which university um, section um, you graduated from. Then um, those entry requirements uh, you can see are a little bit more flexible. So for them, that you had 106 out of 10. Uh, we understand as well as looking at the academic scope that students from those universities, uh, their coursework mirrors something that is a bit more, uh, would say, quite similar to the U.S. Uh, standpoints. So we are able to uh, make a little bit of that exception there for those that students. So to kind of sum that part up, if you have 55 out of 100 or 6.5 out of 10, you're fine. However, if you're falling a little bit shy, you can take a look and see uh, what university you graduated from to see if you would fall under the NUSER 1 or NUSER 2 ranked universities. So for IELTS and TOEFL, um, the 6.0, um, that's a pretty standard, uh, no band less than five for um, your English accept, um, acceptance into the university. Uh, TOEFL being 78, no band less than 17. Uh, we understand that with the current restrictions in place that a lot of test centers for IELTS and TOEFL are currently closed, so we understand that. So there's two other alternatives that a lot of students are able to secure their English placements with. One is the ITEP, uh, International Testing for English Placement. So for that, we require a score of 3.8. Um, the other one would be Duolingo. For that, we require a score, once again, these offer direct entry for 100. Okay. Uh, this is your av the average uh, program cost for a student coming on campus. Uh, once again, 
uh, I'll talk about uh, the program cost and then talk about uh, various scholarships as well. So 10,550, uh, the GMAT and jury, it is waived off. Uh, and what I've listed here is just to give an idea, your estimated tuition cost for a student who is, once again, direct entry, uh, not requiring any prerequisites. Uh, thesis and non-thesis, uh, you might ask why the price difference. Uh, for non-thesis students will take an extra class. Uh, students who are pursuing a thesis track will do uh, research uh, with professors or other companies instead of that set class. Okay. Um, I'll go over the engineering requirements and then I'll talk about scholarships just overall because um, it would generally mirror the same. So within the College of Engineering, this is a little bit of a snapshot into uh, some of the opportunities that our students have as well as hearing it from your fellow colleagues as well. Uh, this is one, one of my uh, fantastic student, Adira. He also uh, actually about to graduate. Uh, he, he was pursuing electrical engineering at CSU. And uh, he's also from, from India as well. Uh, he graduated his bachelor's in India and then came over uh, to pursue his master's in, in uh, electrical engineering. So one thing great about the College of Engineering, um, and it kind of mirrors what I mentioned with engaged learning and internship opportunities, our main focus is to make sure that our students are really engaged, not just within the university, the community, but also within the field they're looking to enter. And we really want to graduate what we consider ready to go engineers. Uh, we want to make sure that these students have the research skill sets, that they have done those hands-on practical experiences, because that's essentially what grad school is also about. It's not just having a strong academic education, as I mentioned, but it's getting um, those uh, various skill sets generally what employers are looking for, those hands-on practical experience, those internship opportunities, uh, those various skill sets. So those are some of the things that really uh, we really take into mind when we're looking for those opportunities for our students. Okay, um, these are the entry requirements. Uh, I hope that all the, uh, the red, the numbers don't uh, confuse you all. Uh, I try to put everything that I could into one snapshot of a, of a screen to make it easier for you. So to put it very simply, um, the entry requirements, as I mentioned, for College of Business, it mirrors the same for the College of Engineering. So in that in component, the local entry requirements are the same, the English requirements are the same. As I mentioned, uh, if you're looking for online English assessment scores, ITEP 3.8 overall and Duolingo 100 overall. For computer science, all the way down to um, environmental engineering, the GRE is way for those majors. There are only two majors that we will still require the GRE. One is biomedical engineering. And for that, there's a GRE score required of a quantitative score in the 70th percentile and analytical writing 3.5 uh, plus uh, for chemical engineering in the 80th percentile, analytical writing uh, 3.5 or higher. So if you can see on these slides here, uh, the program uh, tuition cost, you can see for on campus uh, 9,980 per semester. And towards the right, you will see the estimated tuition cost, uh, a wide range between 30 to uh, 36,000 roughly. Okay. So one thing great about CSU is that um, every university in the United States uh, generally receives some type of funding. Um, how they utilize funding is generally different uh, per university. So within CSU, um, the main three metrics that we utilize funding for with the university and funding comes from our alumni base, our donors, uh, other research um, institutions, et cetera. Uh, the main focus is one, uh, tuition cost. So a lot of the funding gets broken down to keeping tuition costs low and affordable. When you look and compare other universities, uh, generally tuition costs can be between 45 to 60,000. We already, once again, put it back into our tuition to keep it low and affordable for all students, whether you're international student or domestic students, keep it affordable for all students. We also um, allocate um, X amount of funding, um, monetary funding for our research uh, uh, institutions on campus. So we wanna make sure that students have access to research internship opportunities. So all of those gets embedded towards keeping those options available for not only for our graduate students, but also for our PhD students, as well as our undergraduate students. Um, and then the third component uh, generally will be for um, access within career services. So a lot of a huge component of our university as well as making sure that our students are able to secure employment. Uh, so the main focus is also once again, building up those pipelines to have access for our students for whether it's companies or, or there's connections or even to have access on campus as well. Um, in January, for example, uh, we flew in representatives from various uh, companies in Silicon Valley. And a lot of those um, representatives gave a presentation on big data. So the whole workshop was for big data. And a lot of our computer science students attended, uh, our MIS students attended, any student um, generally could sign up and attend. And they were able to meet with these professionals, uh, able to interview with some of these professionals, as well as network as well. 
Um, that's something that we do on a regular basis. Um, we have you know, virtual town halls. We also have numerous um, opportunities and access points for our students. So a student might, uh, for you all out there in the audience, might ask, well, everything sounds great. These are the tuition costs per semester, let's say for engineering, 9,980. Well, what are the scholarship opportunities? Fantastic. So um, one of the things just to kind of point is that you know, we are looking to, once again, be open for the fall semester. So for any student who's able to uh, make that journey um, across and come from India or anywhere else in the world to, to um, Ohio and within Ohio CSU, fantastic. We're, we're excited to welcome you. We'll pick you up at the airport. We're really happy to have you on campus. Um, if any student is currently unable to make that journey, once again, we want to make sure that all of these uh, majors as well as access points are available for all types of students. We also have two various platforms. One is CSU Live, another one is CSU Online. Once again, um, those are options for students who might want to take um, the semester, the fall semester online before coming to campus in the spring semester. So I'll talk about those because uh, obviously scholarships are a little bit different depending on on campus or online. Um, second. So uh, for any students looking to pursue the online platforms, uh, it really mirrors the virtual campus experience, uh, which is something that we're looking to provide all students, whether, it, uh, whether they're coming on campus, obviously they have the on-campus experience, or if they are coming um, off uh, or online, then obviously they'll have that. Um, so for scholarships, um, generally we're looking to provide students around uh, between zero to 2,980. So if you're coming to take online classes, uh, you would generally be paying about 7,000. If you're looking to um, stay online, I'm uh, sorry, come on campus, it can range from zero to 2,000. And these are listed on the courses. Um, if you have any other set questions about the access points or even just uh, about the online, please reach out to your counselors at Study Metro. The deadline for application uh, for on campus is July 21st, but for live and online, they are July 24th. 